and over to you Sharon. Okay thank you. All right so the funding for the so the EPSA team is a two-year project and it's been funded from central government to deal with the um, poor attendance figures but a number of young people, a high number of young people since the pandemic since the pandemic and COVID. Um, and so a number of young people have developed some mental health issues and this has impacted their ability to attend school. So some money was sought. Many local authorities did apply for the funding um, and got it and they've all dealt with it in different ways. I am told and um, certainly from the neighbouring authorities that we are quite unusual in that we actually offer some face to face support to young people as well as doing sort of putting information online. So um, it's a two year project. It started in April 22 and we will come to an end currently in um, at the end of March. 24. So that's our time scales. The team consists of um, it's a multi agency team. So we have one family worker. We have two emotional well being practitioners. We have one assistant educational psychologist and a youth worker. The youth worker post is currently vacant, but that's due to be filled um, at the beginning of February. There's also an ATM, who's myself, and the team manager, who's Karina Crowley. So there's um, so that's who the team is made up of. The role of the team is to work with young people to help them to re-access their education and that's where our key performance indicators are for those young people to actually start to attend school again. So we aren't to work with young children who won't go to school, we work with those young people who um, are school avoidant, and that is due to their mental health. So that would usually be their anxiety. We have uh, on those who found the school environment a challenge. So by default, um, we have found that most of those that we are working with in the EBSA team do either have a diagnosis of autism or they are waiting for a, a diagnosis of diagnosed of autism. That's not to say we won't work with young people who don't have autism, but that's just the way it's worked out by default. So we work closely with those professionals working with children with autism and the SEN team as well. So we do have quite a good working relationship with them. Um, we So the work of the team is often to have a level of challenge with schools. So we um, we would work at, you know, we would look at what support schools have provided to try to help children to re-engage with their education. Um, and often we would need to be challenging them a little bit more to see what else they can do or what other support is needed to work with those um, children. We, um, as I say, we work with young people in the mainstream schools, secondary, so we only were offer the face to face support to those attending secondary education. So um, I talked to someone in um, to Thames Valley School recently about their young person, why that had been declined. But um, that young person was actually primary age. And so that's why we weren't able to work with them. Um, we have extended that out a little bit, so we do, don't just work with children in the Reading area. We do also work with those children who are Reading children, but attending schools in either West Berkshire or Wokingham. So those are the ones we've worked with so far. Um, so we do we have tried to extend our remits to make sure we can help as many children as we can. We offer an intensive way of working with young people. So we allocate a um, we allocate one worker to work with the child and one worker to work with the parents. And the expectation is that both the child and the parents are seen once a week. And also um, 
we um so we work with one oh, sorry i'm looking at the um at the uh, chat so i shouldn't be looking at that so we work with one worker with a child one worker with the parents and they're seen once a week they we would ask the workers to work ideally and see them on different days we have had to work with some children where there's um an attachment um issues we have sort of had to work so in those cases sometimes we do have to see the the child and the parent on the same day to try and separate them out but ideally we would want two times of touching base with the families each week as a minimum um our referral process is to um I, i've just updated that uh, we've um so i was asking workers people who wanted to make a referral to just send um like a, a paragraph with information that's relevant about the child and the EBSA and why they fe felt they met our referral criteria. But actually, um, I've just developed a form um, that um, asks more specific questions around that. And I can send that to um, Hamani or Alistair at the end of this meeting and they can send that out so that workers actually have a copy of that form. So I think. It's one of those things that because it's a project, it's like it is developing. So we, you know, over time we found that certain things will make things easier for everybody. Um, so we 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 ask people to fill in the form first of all. Based on that form, I would, with my manager, look and make a decision as to whether we did feel that we could actually support that family and if we can then we request a consultation so the referrer so hopefully as many people within the school setting who work with the family and know the family um, the attendance officers anyone from the send team we would ask them to all attend the consultation and then we would have a discussion as to whether we felt that actually the EBSA team was the right support for the family and if accepted we've been able to allocate very quickly so we haven't had a wait list and so we've had quite a good turnover of, of children so we've been able to um to allocate quite quickly so that's worked really well um what if following the consultation the we do agree to work with the child and their family we would ask the referrer to complete a CSPA request as well but that's just a very simple paperwork exercise that's just really so that we can get that piece of work on open on the system so we would just say um to send the details of the of the family to CSPA with um, a paragraph to say actually it's been accepted following consultation and therefore it just enables CSPA to open all the processes on the system for us. Um, then we would allocate the work out quickly. So um, that's kind of our face to face work. That's what we offer there. The other part of the work that we offer is our EBSA presentations. So we've had two of those now um, and the list of those has also been rolled out to people and to schools as well. So all the schools are aware of our EBSA presentations. And so those are available to any professional. So that's that includes the primary school teachers and working in the primary schools. Um, so they can attend those presentations. Presentations talk about EPSA, they talk about anxiety, they talk about the causes and the processes to support, and they also offer a number of strategies for workers to um, offer some support to young people uh, um, so that they can deal with those young people within the school setting themselves. Um, we've had very positive feedback from those but as I say we've only done one face to face and one on teams um, I think so we're just getting up the numbers with that really um, and we we had to cancel the January one because of um, staff shortages and also we hadn't had many referrals for that one but the February one is going to be quite busy hopefully um, if people want to apply for the presentations they need to go through Sinclair 
Jordan, our business support manager, and he'll put them onto that. And he'll also send a reminder near to the time of, of the presentation and um, a link to join it when it's on Teams. So that's a big part of the work that we've been doing. And we, we are developing the presentation. Um, we haven't had, so we've had some positive comments, but it's waiting for the um, service user feedback as well. So if you attend, we would really appreciate it if people can get a uh, complete the service user feedback so that we can further develop that. Um, so we make sure that we're getting it as good as we can do. And the other thing that we're doing is we are offering the EBSA guidance. So that's now on the Early Help Hub. So that is um, a very in-depth look at anxiety, anxiety processes, understanding um, uh, habituation and how to support young people who are struggling with school avoidance. So that's about that. And then they also does some strategies and the strategies have been divided for secondary schools, primary schools and for families. So that information is for all parties. So, um, so yes, that's on there and that's, a, a, that's quite an extensive document now. So we're quite pleased with that really. Um, so that's good. So there are the processes. Um, as I say, I'll send a copy of the referral form that we've done to um, Hamani so that can be sent out. Um, and I don't know if anyone's got any questions, really, because I think that's really all I can tell you about us.